In this video, we will take a look at a very interesting concept which is related not only to Salesforce but also to different non-Salesforce technologies which is synchronous versus asynchronous execution. Let's try to understand these two concepts with an example. It's a Sunday and Sam wants to go to a supermarket. When he comes out to his yard, he sees that one of his car tires has a puncture and he won't be able to drive it as far as the supermarket. Thankfully, there is a mechanic nearby. So, Sam decides to take his car to the mechanic. Once he reaches to the mechanic, the mechanic tells Sam that it will take 3 hours for this car to get fixed as the mechanic has a few more jobs in hand to finish before he takes up Sam's work. Now, Sam has two options here. Either he waits for 3 hours at the mechanic, gets the car fixed and drives his car to the supermarket. Or he can get a bus and go to the supermarket, do the shopping and come back to the mechanic to pick up his car hoping that the car will be fixed by then. Here, the first option is an example of synchronous execution where Sam is present there at the mechanic waiting for 3 hours practically doing nothing. The second option is an example of asynchronous execution where Sam is getting other important things done while the mechanic gets the car fixed for him, saving 3 hours for him which he can use for the other more important things as it's a Sunday for him. In Salesforce, synchronous execution means that our code runs sequentially. Each operation must be completed before the next one begins. This type of execution is straightforward and easy to implement and understand. However, it can lead to longer wait time for users, especially if each step takes a significant amount of time. This is where asynchronous execution comes into play. Asynchronous execution allows multiple operations to run concurrently or parallelly. As we saw in the example, Sam did shopping at the supermarket where the mechanic got his car fixed for him at the same time. Asynchronous execution improves the user experience by reducing the wait times and allows our system to handle multiple tasks simultaneously. However, it also introduces complexity because we need to manage these background tasks and ensure they complete successfully. Both of these approaches have their own advantages and disadvantages. Let's try to understand these. In synchronous Apex, the code gets executed serially, while in asynchronous, the code gets executed concurrently. This is the reason the synchronous execution takes more time than the asynchronous one. By default, the methods that we create and execute in Apex are synchronous methods. However, for asynchronous Apex, there are multiple ways we can implement the solutions which need more attention in the terms of the way they get initiated, the way they complete their execution and the way they throw and handle the exceptions. Since the asynchronous Apex executes in the background, there is no out-of-the-box way for the end user to receive the real-time updates about either failure or success. In case it fails, there is no way for the end user to take any action. We need to write custom logic for these failure use cases. However, in synchronous Apex, we can show the errors directly to the end user so that the end user can take the actions immediately. Debugging is needed especially for failure scenarios. Since the asynchronous Apex completes their executions in different transactions, different Apex logs get generated. Also, if there are exception handling implemented, we need to write additional logic to capture those exceptions, store it somewhere in the database for further analysis. In case of synchronous Apex, only one Apex log gets generated. Also, since we can present the errors to the end user on the screen itself, less debugging efforts are needed. Asynchronous Apex gets higher governor limits on resources like CPU time and heap memory which allows us to use asynchronous Apex for more resource intensive operations like doing mass data update or performing complex computations. Synchronous on the other side has lesser governor limits for these resources making it not suitable for the operations that take more time and resources. 
Now comes the very important question, which is better and which one should we use often? The answer to this question is, you should use these approaches based on the requirements. Let's try to understand this with a few scenarios. We want to implement a screen which will perform some database operations. Now in this case, the immediate response will be needed to the end user so that if there is any correction in the data that's needed to complete the database operation, it can be done by the user. So in this case, we should use synchronous epics. We want to implement the same screen, but want to add another operation of sending out an email. Now sending an email can be done in the background as it doesn't need human intervention. So, for the database operation, we can use synchronous epics and for sending the email out, we can use the asynchronous epics. We want to implement a nightly job that will process the account records to enrich the customer data by calling the external APIs and receiving the data from these APIs. Since this is happening in the background and also performing the operation on a large data set, we should use asynchronous epics here. So, to conclude that we should not be choosing either synchronous or asynchronous epics based just on their technical differences or our ease of use. We should analyze the requirement from a technical perspective and implement a solution which is best suitable. As we saw in these examples, somewhere we used either of these and somewhere we used a blend of both. Let's now take a look at the different types of provisions in Salesforce using which we can implement asynchronous Apex. Future method. This is great for short background operations. Batch Apex. This is ideal for processing large volumes of data records. Queable Apex. This is similar to future methods, but provide more control and supports chaining of jobs. This is suitable for operations where Tasks need to be performed in a particular sequence. Scheduled Apex. This allows us to execute a piece of Apex code exactly at a specified time. It is also possible for us to use the blend of all of these types for a solution. However, there are also certain limitations which we need to consider before we choose the ones from these. Before we wrap up, here are some best practices for using the synchronous and asynchronous Apex. Always consider the user experience. Minimize wait times wherever possible. Ensure proper error handling, especially for asynchronous processes. Monitor and log the status of asynchronous jobs to troubleshoot issues. Use the right tool for the job. Choose future methods, batch Apex, queueable Apex or scheduled Apex based on your specific needs. If you like this video, please do like and share. If you want to receive more of such informative content, please hit the subscribe button. If you want us to make content related to any Salesforce or Salesforce related topic, please do let us know through comments.